Fun demand, even on the doors. There we go. Gate by a young Scottish artist called George Massett Brown. Uh, the idea of the figure is very simple. He's meant to represent the two wines produced by Sandman. That would be port wine and sherry. So the hat being a Spanish sombrero hat stands for the sherry being produced in Spain. And the cape here is a traditional Portuguese student's cape. So that stands for the port wine. Sandeman uses state-of-the-art technology to inform you about the wines and ports. Here is the waiting room for guests located up on the hills of Duro Valley. Enough theory for now. Let's move to tasting. So this appetit actually uh, it's a very young and refreshing type of white port that also reflects uh, I would say the nowadays standards for white ports in the market in spite of uh, some special editions of white ports with 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, Ferreira has one, but that's, that will be a different type of consumption. This one can be consumed so slightly chill between 12 and 14 degrees, just mm -hmm. pure like that, or also with tonic water mm -hmm. uh, to create a, a nice cocktail that we launched officially in 1994 called the Sandman's Splash, mm -hmm. also called the Porto. Oh nice. You will use a long glass, lots of ice, lots of lemon, if you have a little bit of mint. You mm -hmm. also bring some floral aroma to the to the cocktail. And a more a kind of exactly, mojito. that's something between the, the I would say the gin tonic and the mojito. Yes. Uh, and why not to try it also above a pure lemon ice cream bowl? Mm -hmm. You pour a glass of it, you will use maybe two straws caipirinha straw, mm -hmm. which are uh, a little bit smaller and larger. Yes. Um, and it's the perfect sort of sorbet for some. What about the color? The color of this port? Because sometimes white ports, uh, they are slightly, the color is more, the, the less, it's not so orange actually, this one's quite orange. Yeah, sometimes orange. yellow, sometimes it's a little bit pink. What it makes? What it's, makes the color? It's, uh, through the age, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, of the wine, uh, because of the barrels used and because of the grape barrels. What barrels are used, for example, for Those are the used barrels that we have in Villa Nova Cairo, just uh, that we use to, to add the leaves. So, so it's like oak? Uh, oak, French oak. French oak. oak. Yes. And um, that's more or less the, I will say, the secret. Mm -hmm. Some others, and obviously the, the concentration, the, the type of uh, work that you will do in the winery, to create a more concentrated type of blends or not really. Mm -hmm. Some of those, some of uh, white ports are lighter in body and in color because the, the winemaking team wanted to be like that. Mm -hmm. This one presents a goldish color that is quite, uh, also attractive. Yeah, it's very nice. And actually, the color and the taste kind of, it's, I kind of can sense some like, like a honey. Yes. If there is a little bit like honey. It's half sweet, for instance. It presents yes. uh, an average of 99 to 100 grams per liter mm -hmm. of sugar. But uh, the technical, I would say, fine of this wine is tropical aromas, a lot of Brazilian fruits in it, mm -hmm. a lot of, uh, I would say, pineapple yeah. and mango, for instance. Uh, some fresher fruit sensations like oranges and lemons, mm -hmm. something uh, citrus in it, and uh, something honey, too. Mm -hmm. And finally, a little hint of uh, almond, which is a natural consequence of any white port with an aging process mm -hmm. and the contact with the wood. Mm -hmm. So that's the typical white port. If you don't want to, to use it as a cocktail, drink it with some almonds, for yes. instance, or some salads, Mediterranean style. Mm -hmm. So yeah, actually, the almonds make it a little bit to be more like a port because otherwise, it has, it's, the taste is very close to a dessert wines. Yes. Many dessert wines have that similar color. Taste, of course, this is unique, but some of these are wines have. But for instance, this one is very used as an event, you know that. But uh, I would say with some pineapple, some fresh fruits, desserts, yeah, very fresh, very nice, right. and some uh, special uh, cheese uh, also use it to uh, match sea, uh, seafood mm -hmm. with national sauce. So this is a nice, it's a nice surprise. Actually, you will see how we can use port wines for different consumptions as, as the usual target states. Mm -hmm. For instance, this one is a Founders Reserve, a Ruby Reserve, as because it presents a deep color and some red fruits aromas. It has a lot of black cherries 
on the nose mm -hmm. and it will let you sort of a nice texture and a chocolatey flavor as a final nose. That's the perfect one to match with some chocolate. But nevertheless, to chocolate lovers and dark chocolate lovers. Chocolate with strawberries. Exactly. So my personal advice is where is this one or this one? Uh, when I have some friends at home, I open a bottle and I serve some different types of cheeses. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say uh, exactly blue cheeses because the, the flavor is a little bit too strong, but creamy cheeses with some different jellies and jams made from red fruits, mm -hmm. for instance. Creamy uh, like that one with the Portuguese cheese. Yes, it's perfect. Strawberry trail, perfect. That one would be very nice. There's the English Stilton, some French cheeses, mm -hmm. not blue, once again. And um, some some fresh fruits, mm -hmm. really some strawberries, for instance, and some cherries, some jellies, and some chocolate. It's and it tastes sweet. just a few months in a while, mm -hmm. like that. It's perfect. So the vintage on. are really concentrated type of wines. Those are wines like uh, red wines. Those from one unique and single year, uh, quite exceptional in its quality. The wine is produced, is buffered after two years only of aging process inside large vans. So all the other ports are ports I will say really used to the oxygen contact. Mm -hmm. This one is not. This one is really stressed inside the barrel and then it's bottled. So they are really concentrated type of wines with lots of tannins and structure mm -hmm. um, that will age for decades once bottled. And that's also why we used to recommend a minimum of uh, 10 to 12 years before open a bottle. Mm -hmm. Starting from the year of the of the harvest. So, for instance, this one is from 2000. Logically, it will be good mm -hmm. after 2010, 12, or, or mm -hmm. even 15. That's that why you call it bow vintage because the bow vintage is the younger vintage. Uh, actually, um, I mean the idea is clear. they are intense and fruity and some chocolate and pepper type mm -hmm. of wines that you can enjoy with some cheeses once again mm. or just like that with a nice conversation. I can have it even like with uh, goat cheese. I can imagine to have nice goat cheese with this. But the very nice experience is, is to match this one during the meal. So use mm -hmm. red wine large glasses, not port glasses. Mm -hmm. Put it at 18 degrees, decant it, wait an hour and serve it with some Argentine steak and chocolate and pepper sauce. Mm. And mm. you will see how we can uh, drink a vintage during mm -hmm. the meal, or a port wine during the meal in this case. Very nice, very gourmet, but it's very surprising. Raspberries. I yes. really can add raspberries, a really raspberry taste. A lot taste. of different berries, because mm -hmm. the, the varietals used for that type of, of wine is essentially Torriga Franca mm -hmm. and Torriga National, who are grapes with uh, an incredible and natural bouquet of different berries and different red fruits. Mm -hmm. I mean, Torriga National and, and Franca mostly. With something the national has the little pepper in it as a final mouth, mm -hmm. and the Torriga Franca will bring also something chocolate. Mm -hmm. And I see the content of the alcohol is a 20% of alcohol on the, on the vintage port. Uh, it's slightly, it's definitely more than wine, but, but for the ports, is it a less than classical no, ports? No, it's regular averages. You will see uh, ports go from uh, usually 19 and 22. Some whites, I think they can go to the 17. Mm -hmm. Some lighter whites. That's light, lighter, lighter whites. <laughs> I don't need tonics. Tonics are completely different. Those are whites aged in small oak barrels. So because of that, and you can compare it with the vintage one, um, it's you chilled. will see it's chilled. Mm -hmm. And you will see that the, light, uh, the color is lighter already. Mm -hmm. Has nothing to have with the, with the ruby. Mm -hmm. this, it starts to be quite amber. Um, usually tonis are wines with different layers of cereals and dried fruits. Some spices, but like cinnamon for instance, and some caramel. Mm -hmm. it's, it's deeper, the it's smell deeper. is deeper. But uh, you can feel that this one, because it's, it has eight years of aging process, mm -hmm. uh, it's a reserve, so a high quality plant. It will present already some, some, some evolution, of course, but still quite fruit with lots of I would say plums and figs. Mm, figs. And dried, dried grapes. You can really sense the figs uh, as they are growing everywhere here. And uh, it's like the figs really get to wine as well. You know, figs, they have really definitely It's really nice. And, um, for that reason, this Imperial is perfect, slightly chilled. I would say if you have this, those two bottles, I will reserve that for figs. 
for some dried fruits, some English cakes, and some creme brulee. Creme, yes, creme brulee. It matches I had perfectly. It on the tip of my tongue. Exactly. toasted flavor, um, and and the cereal, the cinnamon. Dessert.